three guys who combined to play 15 seasons in the National Football League trenches. Well, two guys. And Mackey, who didn't do sh**. He just, he just sits there and looks pretty. This is the O-Line Committee. Welcome in. The only show in America where an idiot fan gets to sit down with two guys who played 15. You guys are arguing 16 combined seasons. We have to yes. get the big voice guy to change this at some point. Yeah, come on. Yeah, 15 and a official. half. How about 15 and a half? Hey, no, I got a credit. It counts. Season. It counts. It counts. I earned those three games. <laughs> OTA offseason training camp, the games, it all counts as a, as a season. Everything counts. Come on, Alex Mackie. Boone, Jeremiah Searles, Phil Mackey. This is the O-line committee. You could do us a huge favor here as we're launching this platform this summer for the first time. Click the subscribe button on the YouTube channel. The like button to help spread the word about this offensive line lifestyle community here. And uh, if you could also tell a friend who likes trenches and warfare and things like that. Uh, you guys just got done with I'm going to pump your tires here because you guys let Ooh. me just kind of be a, a fly on the wall. Uh, a, a brute O-line training weekend. You brought in some of the brightest college offensive linemen. You brought in some former NFL players. And I, I only understood like 25% of what you were talking about during your film demonstration, but... You guys are uh, making the offensive line community better with the work that you're doing. So that was awesome. Dude, it was great. And it was great having you. And I think the boys were, they had a great time. And I think the one thing that they took away from it was this isn't just a game. It's not a game to us. It's not a game to Jeremiah. It's not a game to Nick. I mean, Nick was so well received. And I know Jeremiah knows that, but I talked to Nick yesterday, Hartwick, and having him in for the camp was phenomenal. Like the, the, his message to the boys was so important. And a lot of it is, let's not forget why we did all this work to get here, right? Like so many guys get there and all of a sudden they're like, oh man, I get to relax, I get to chill. And he was like, I want to be a six-year-old, but at the same time, I have to be an adult. It's okay to go out and have fun and give it everything we have. But at the same time, every day we have to be working for something. And it was funny because at first I didn't think he was going to break down any film. And the minute he walked in the room, he was like, you see that? You look at that. Look at that. Cover two. It's going to one. Ooh, where's it coming from? I was like, oh, he's back like a kid in a candy store. Next thing I know, I see him walking up like the coach, fingers all mangled up. All right, guys, pay attention. Listen, see this guy over here. Like, dude, he's right back at it, man. It's so fun to see him out there and, and just to see the boys working. And it was a great time. Yeah, you know, the, the other thing we wanted to harp on these kids is you don't start becoming a pro in January. Right, like so many guys think that their senior season is just their senior season, and then I'll get ready for the NFL once my season's over in January. Like it starts right now. Yeah. You know, your knowledge of understanding, going through and scrubbing your social media from. I mean, this generation had social media when they were in high school. There's words that you said six, seven years ago that are now no, no words. Right, big mm -hmm. no, no words. So making sure you clean that up, making sure you talk to mom and dad and brothers, and be like, hey, can't have you spouting off to the idiot fan. <laughs> on social media when you have a bad game like those are the kind of things that these kids weren't really thinking about or having Jim Nagy from the Senior Bowl or Eric Galco from the Shrine Bowl come in and talk about what their process looks like how they're scouting players and you know just trying to give these kids to put them in the best situation so they can have an incredible senior year so that when they hit the ground running in January they're already ahead right because the getting in the NFL is always about being ahead of the next guy taking the next guy's job making sure you get drafted higher, whatever it may be, like that all starts right now, not in January. Yeah. So yeah. I'm sure like we should sprinkle in more of this throughout <laughs> as we record more episodes and we can do deeper dives. But people came here today and you and you mentioned that because I sat in there for one of the little film sessions and was trying to decipher what was happening. And you mentioned Micah Parsons in one of the the clips that you showed those guys. And so this episode is all about one of the most ferocious young edge rushers in the entire National Football League, mm. Micah Parsons of the Dallas Cowboys. So this dude, two years in the NFL, 176 pressures in two years. This includes playoffs, by the way. They played a couple of playoff games. 29 sacks in his first two seasons, including playoffs. The Cowboys love to move him around the line of scrimmage. Sometimes he's in traditional linebacker spots. Sometimes he's head up on the center. We're going to show you a couple of those clips. So I just went in. This is how this works. I go in as a fan and say, oh, these are interesting plays from my perspective. Let's fan. get people that know what they're actually <laughs> looking at to break these down. So if you guys are ready, oh, let's well, fire up some Micah Parsons. Before we film. do, can we just talk about Micah Parsons and about how well he fits into the Dan Quinn scheme? Like He is every bit of Michael Bennett that he wanted him to be, and it's this whole, we don't have to blitz you. We're just going to have this guy somewhere out here. You're not sure where, and we're going to see if you guess right. And when you look at his measurables, it's like, Six foot four, six foot three, 
245 pounds, 250 pounds, not even that big. And you watch him just steamroll people. Like I'm talking tackles that are 300 some pounds and he steamrolls them like, wait, 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 what's going on over here? I mean, that's something to be said about how explosive he really is. And that's one of the themes that when you watch him, you have to watch that. It's the initial quickness off the ball that gets everybody just gone right now. I mean, his college tape, I'll put up there against Von Miller, Alden Smith, you know, some of the great college Ooh. tape. Like when you pull up what he did at Penn State, it is remarkable, you know. And then you talk about he went to the combine and ran, I think, a 4-4. You know, like when you Stupid. put those type of things together, like you can already tell like this guy's different, but then the production has just been off the charts. Yeah. You know, to have a guy that has 29 sacks and isn't a true edge rusher – I mean, there was times two years ago where, like, they had so many injuries inside linebacker. He was playing, like, the Will <laughs> right. or the Mike at times, and then he was still finding ways. And it's just like, this could have been an all-pro. He could have been an all-pro at two positions. Like, honestly, uh, it could have been like, you could have voted him all-pro at defensive end, outside backer, or inside backer. Like, yeah. he was that good and is only going to continue to be better and better and better. So, you, because Alex, you mentioned his size, right? So he's, he, yeah. what is he, like 245 or whatever he measures in at? And he's going up against oftentimes offensive tackles that might be 75, 80 pounds heavier than he is, that might oh, yeah. be taller than he is. So, yeah. how does, before we get into some of the film here, how does a guy who's giving up, I think of like, you know, put two guys in an octagon in the UFC or in a, you know, an amateur wrestling match with a 75 pound weight difference or a sumo wrestling match, whatever it is. How does he get so much leverage? How does he get the strength advantage while giving up so much size in some cases? I think a lot of it isn't so much his strength as much as it is his speed and his quickness. I think, and I remember watching this game like it was yesterday, the Cincinnati game last year. Remember that, Jeremiah? Yep. It was like the second game of the season. He was going against Lyle Collins, who he had played against an entire year before. So it's kind of like these two know each other really well. It's going to be interesting. Like third play of the game, he gets a sack. Why? Because he comes off the ball. He went inside, and Lyle L was like, no, 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 because everyone's always seen him off the ball. Like That's the initial quickness that gets you out of your stance and at times gets you out of control. And the minute he starts to go inside, you're too far outside. You can't recover. Or you're slow playing him. You expect him inside, and he does this quick jab and then back out again, and guys just lose their feet. I was watching um, – I remember watching against the Rams. It was at Havenstein. Well, all of a sudden, he's just literally ran off the edge. And haven't seen was kind of like, I'm not sure. I feel like he's going inside. And he just dipped that shoulder around the edge. And it just happens so quick that you don't have time to react at times. Yeah, you know, the other piece is understanding leverage. You know, yes. you see guys like Jared Allen, right, who was in the back end of his career, who wasn't the fastest, wasn't the strongest. like, But he had such a plan and understood leverage and angles so well that that's how he created his sacks. And you see so many young guys in the league that are insanely talented, but they don't quite understand the the techniques and the ins and outs of what it means to rush the passer, right? Micah Parsons has the athletic ability, but you can see his natural instincts of understanding, hey, that offensive tackle's shoulder is soft to the inside. That means his back foot's back. I'm going to attack it right now. Or, hey, I know that this is going to be formationally looks like a three-step drop, so I'm going to tighten my angle down and get there half a second sooner, which is now a sack fumble versus a completion. You know, he has the mental side makeup too, which I think is what part makes him super special, is he doesn't just rush off pure athletic ability. He has a plan on every rush. So so he's not one of these guys that sometimes you offensive linemen will look over and make fun of like, oh, the uh, – uh, that guy's an idiot. We can pretty much just say what we're going to. Micah Parsons is above that in terms of football well, IQ. You, 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 don't, like. you don't have the production <laughs> yeah. that he has without having an extremely high football IQ. You and can be the most the, talented guy in the world. If you don't have good football IQ, the production that he has does not happen. And if you don't have an incredibly high IQ, they're not going to let you drop into coverage as a defensive end when you're their best pass rusher. Like That's, to me, where people kind of start to lag. Like Everyone's like, oh, he's such a great pass rusher. I'm looking at the fact that the number one pass rusher on this team is dropping sometimes. Like We're not going to send him okay. Like Even if we're just messing and he wants to fake drop and then go, like we're not going to rush this guy at all at the quarterback. And he still shows up in the back end, whether it's making tackles, batting the ball down. I mean, the one thing about him that I will say is he is relentless. You see him all over the field. They, they throw smoke screens out there. He's making the tackle. They're throwing fade routes. He's running downfield trying to make the tackle. Like He is one of these guys that he's a high-energy guy. So when you go into the game, if I was an offensive lineman, I'd say, hey, listen, we got to take this guy out first. Because if his energy starts to lower, everybody else's will go with it. If he continues to get them going and rattle them around and keep them excited, then we're going to have problems all day. So if anything, we have to attack this one player. 
A lot of, you don't see a lot of guys doing that. The last thing I'll say before we get into the tape here, because we're going to talk about it a lot, is he does have a stud rushing off the other side. Yeah, Very does. rarely do you see a guy that can have this much individual success when he's the only guy that can get to the pass, right? Because you can slide to him, you can chip him. But when you have Demarcus Lawrence on the other side, who's been an all-pro, who is extremely productive as well, that's when you can really start to see guys shine. We use the, I used the Vikings in 2017, for example, right? You had Everson Griffin, sure. who was having an all-pro year, and Daniil Hunter's coming out party. It was unstoppable, right? So you're seeing that type of pressure from the edges – with the Cowboys because of guys like Demarcus Lawrence on the other side too. Yep. Yeah. All right. Let's pull it up here. Gentlemen, speaking of the Vikings, I promise this is the only Vikings related clip I'm going to bring up for you guys. With my little Vikings clothes. So yeah, this is the game. So uh, yeah, Christian Derrissaw went out with an injury at left tackle early in this game. I'll pop this up full screen for you guys. And I believe Cooper rush played in this game. Did Cooper Rush the beat Thursday the Vikings game, twice right? in the last couple of years? Mm. Ah, this is so. This is late. This is December, early December. This is no. This is not the Thursday night game. I don't Dude, think. I, I don't know, man. I feel like that's a Jeopardy question. I'm not sure. Mm. This is definitely Viking after the TJ Hawkinson Cooper trade because the Viking killer. Is. No, he is. Dude, he is. Look at him. Look at him out there. He, he's an everyone killer. We call so that we a got... motorcycle stance. He's getting ready to ride his motorcycle somewhere. Look at that guy. He's so we'll, revving that so, thing. I want to frame these up. There's like eight or nine clips that that we'll go through here if we if we get to all of them. And I think it's just if I could put a headline on this, it's as an offensive lineman or an offensive line collectively, how do you deal with Micah Parsons? And the first few clips are going to be Micah Parsons getting home, getting a sack, and then we'll kind of graduate into maybe some other instances where the offensive line did a better job here. So let, we'll run this, and then you guys can tell us what the hell's happening. Well, first of all, it helps that uh, I'm just by looking at this. That's not Christian Derrissaw out there on yeah. the left tackle side. No, it's Blake so Brandle. That's, Blake a, Brandle. <laughs> that's a good. We don't starting, need to slide to him. Good starting point. <laughs> we don't um, need to slide to Micah here. But We're here's good. so here's the first thing. If I'm playing left tackle here, right, the first thing I'm looking at is go back to the start, like his feet, right? Is it front foot up? Is it back foot up? Nope, his feet. Oh, you're love Micah Parsons. Parsons. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, you have to ca- you have to count which foot is up, right? Because that's going to be the number of steps in which he makes his move. Is it on three? Is it on five? Or is it on four? Is it on six? Right. So with his outside foot up, you know he can go one, two, make an inside move immediately off his second foot, or he has to get to four. Right. So if you watch it slow here, he fires off no false steps, which is the first thing you watch as a speed rusher. There's no wasted movement, right? He's not stepping back to go forward. You see, like, Demarcus Lawrence over here on the left side. See how he rocks back before he goes forward? Look at the difference. Look at where Parsons is compared to where Lawrence is. That's how you set up a tackle. Mm. You threaten them with speed. Yes, you no got to be, you gotta be thinking about that. All the stuff you guys are thinking about, but it, and you're no, thinking about his footwork off the line of scrimmage, too. That's what that's you're insane. always looking at, though. So it comes naturally. Like you, and you're always reading his stance. Where is he going? What do I think he's going to do? You're trying to formulate your plan for him in your head. But at the same time, like Jeremiah said, you know that on his second step, he can go back inside. So you got to get Pause it right set. there. Pause it right, right there. there. He's the only player across that white line. On the defensive line. He is the only player that has crossed that white line, and he has now completely gotten into the tackle space and threatened him. Everyone else is still a step behind. Yeah, there's a chip there, you know, but every other defender is not across that white line yet. On his first step, he's already eaten up so much more ground, right? So then he pushes him up the field because now Blake Brandle's going, oh, gosh, he's way into my space. So he he takes one too many sets here. That's your second step. Oh, my gosh. Look, he's going on his second step. He's going one, two. He's like, holy crap, he's going to threaten me. Bam, four gets in the ground right there, and he's back in. That's the problem. That's only two steps. That's two. Excuse that's me. how fast they are, and that's how much ground they cover. And that's when people are saying, <clears throat> like we tell our offensive linemen, this is most likely third down. You have to get depth because they're going to threaten upfield right now. They want to get you out of control. It's the f- easiest way to get us off balance is to get us going back really, really fast so that when you do come back in, you see how his inside leg is off the ground. Keep this going. is what we're talking about with sh- soft shoulder. Soft shoulder, if you look at Blake Brandle's right foot, he's up off his foot, he's onto his heel, right? So now all of his force, all of his power is going straight up, right? There's nothing that's going to meet force with force on that soft shoulder. Parsons recognizes that right away which is why he immediately goes, okay, I can come back inside and there's going to be zero force to stop me there. In order for Blake Brandle to regain force, he's got to lose ground. 
haven't you guys also said too that you don't want an edge rusher to get his hands on you before Ever. vice versa? Never. Ever. And, and it looks it looks like it might be a tie. You know, tie goes to the runner here, but but he's definitely got his hands on sixty four a lot quicker than than maybe uh, you well, would like. It's it not even like. just where his hands; it's where his hand is. Right. Look at Blake Brandle's hands. His hands are outside. Right. When you see him shoot his hands. He's outside. Parsons gets that short shoulder, and he pulls himself through, and now he has nothing there to meet that force, and he just dips into the rip and just keeps pushing, pushing, pushing. Now it's a holding penalty or sack or both. And my biggest issue on this play isn't so much uh, Blake. It's the left guard. Go back. One of the points that I want to make on this is that a lot of this problem that we're having right now is falling on Ezra. We're clearly sliding to the left, whether it be the 33, whoever it is, I know as a left guard, when the number one pass rusher in the NFL is out to the left against my second string tackle, I'm telling that center, you need to get your ass here right now because I'm going out there. You need to be able to help him in this situation. And nobody comes. And even you have a chip and a slide coming to you. This should not be a problem. Here he comes, slides out. Should Got be a nice little motion. Right. Kirsch comes back in the box. All right. We're going to the left. Look. Guard, need you. Need you this there is, now. This is where you set as a left guard. You set with body presence. You trust your center is going to be there, and you keep that left arm free and your eyes to 11. Oh, right? Your eyes to 11. This guy goes back inside because he doesn't have trust that Bradbury's there. You see he tries to get back late, but there's nothing he can do now. This is as much on the left tackle as it is on the left guard. So is, is the left guard supposed to throw a punch or get all the way over? No, 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 no. A... You have he tells he's telling you you got to set body presence. So you're basically you're holding that area. So 54 gets hit by the center. You're basically taking the first hit for him, and then he's going to come and grab him. And then the entire time that that is happening, your eyes are watching 11 because he is the biggest problem right now. 54 is not that much of an issue to us, right? Bradbury, we trust you enough. You can just grab this guy, but this guy out here on the edge causes problems, and especially for the hurts quarterback because he's like okay no matter what i'm covered over here i have a chip and we're sliding next thing you know he gets hit from that side and he's like dudes chip and a slide what are we doing this is why things get really hectic really fast because in his mind he's like we're we're good here no matter what we have three guys blocking him and then that guy hits you and you're like wait Three guys were supposed to be blocking him, and I still got hit. Oh, this is going to be a long day. It's going to be a long day, boys. Yeah. That seems like a bad – I mean, again, far be it from me to to say this, but that seems like you've got a backup left tackle in, doesn't that and, – and Ezra Cleveland, you know, he's a, he's a good offensive lineman. He's a veteran. He's in his third year. That would seem like something that shouldn't be mixed up when Micah Parsons is lined up over there, but what do I backup, – Backups get paid too, Phil. They get paid yeah. to, to go in there and play their 20 plays. Show up. Show up. Don't yell All right, so – <laughs> We got <laughs> don't, don't yell at me. I mean, my career being back up. Eat shit. I wasn't talking about you. You were the most ready dude always. Hey, <laughs> backups for life. Hey, you know, I, so, I, didn't, I didn't agree that you were a backup ever. We've got that. Joe Burrow and the Cincinnati Bengals here dealing the game with we were talking about. Here Micah it is. Parsons. So here we go. We'll show you this high angle and then I can already tell you what's going to happen. Happening. It's a little out and in, baby. I mean, this is – and this is a guy who has practiced against each other mm. for several times. But you can see it right away in the way that La L sets. He does not get enough depth, and he does not get vertical. What happens is he gets a little too turned. And if you start to turn, see that? Go back. He ends up doing like a 360. Because you're too you, – you think like, oh, I'm closing off the inside because I'm turning. But what you don't realize is he's not that far up the field. They haven't beat us until their hip gets past our hip. And right here, when you start to turn like this and your feet are clicking, he can feel that. And so he's like, well, you know what I'll do? I'll just push you by because what do I see coming over here? The chip, right? They're always going to try and chip this guy. And if he can get you out of position, like it's almost incredible to think that he didn't just continue that. He was like, no, I'll go inside instead. Yeah. So you don't want to be faced that way if you are uh, an offensive tackle, I'm going to guess. <laughs> throw it! <laughs> yeah, that's the old That's what's being it. said. The old throw I mean, it. You go back to, again, we'll talk about it because we do it all the time, his initial stance, right? He's got his outside foot up, so you know he's going to be able to make a move on three, right? One, two, three. And so he makes it here. He goes, he pushes up the field, threatens with speed. 
and again, the slide's going away. So this is like this is why they moved that guy down to two eyes so that he has a two way go over here, right? That guy over the guard has a two way go, and you get him spun. He can feel leverage here, right? If you see, like Jones over here, right? Jones or jo Jonah Jackson, excuse me, on the left. Is that's not Jonah Jackson? That's Jonah Williams. Jonah Williams. Um, right you see him set he's a little more square he's turned on one if you're turned on one and you show an edge rusher your entire chest you're dead you're dead right and this is just something where again parsons knows them well boom right there he's got his entire chest turned to him there he has a complete two-way go no matter which way he wants to push he can get soft shoulder through the outside or come back inside but again it all starts with a threat of speed clears his hands again he pulls himself through getting that hand through and then just the effort for the sack right he misses initially he misses initially and he puts his foot in the ground and is able to come back and get the sack. Like, that's what makes him so special there, too. So, mm. God, just raising, literally riding Burroughs back here to the ground. It's not hey, a bad you catch thing. that bull, you got to ride it. You know what they say? Yep. <laughs> Amazing. Way. Amazing. All right, let's, let's show you guys one more. Well, there might be a couple more sacks in here, but let's show you one more. One more sack. Let's see here. All right, this is against... The Detroit Lions. He's up in the, the middle. See, see how? See now how he's gone from the edge to now he's off the ball. So in your mind, you, you're panicking, right? He has this whole he's walking around aura. I'm not sure where I'm gonna go, and everyone's kind of staring at him. Where's he going? And then he's like, oh, I'm just gonna go right here over the right guard. Become involved in this. It, it's one of those things where it focuses all five guys on one person. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, yeah, and, this, can, and obviously, this is not a sack. This is this is. This is him motioning bef before the, the snap here and causing chaos. So, yeah. But but that's what it is. You're causing chaos because everyone's trying to follow you with their eyes and see where you're going to go. But he should have known that the Detroit Lions were ready for him. I mean, team led by Dan Campbell would probably eat that kid. The other thing <laughs> they try and do here is, like, they walk a guy off the ball. But what this does is this creates a 5-0 look, right, which just means it's five one-on-one -on -one matchups across the board because you're not going to give Micah Parsons to the back ever. No. And if you do, you're stupid. Right, that's Anthony Barr off the edge too, who you don't want to give to the back either. That's a he's made a lot of sacks in the league, so you're just basically going, "Hey, five guys, five one on ones, someone win their one on one matchup, and we're gonna put Parsons on a guard, right? We're gonna put Parsons on a guard who historically isn't known for their best pass block. I will say this is a really nice job by this right guard. He hits him with his hands first, right? You see his left hand, boom, stuns him, gets him to stop his feet a little bit and transitions. And this is just one where you're saying, "Hey, someone win, someone win up here." And this is a nice job by the Detroit Lions of blocking it all up. Yeah. The other thing you got to be alert for when Parsons is up like this is line games, right? Him running over here, picking the tackle and having 54 loop back inside. All those things are just crazy ways that he can do it. But again, they're just trying to create matchup problems for Parsons. How much does him, so as you're identifying what to do as an offensive line here, because the Cowboys do a lot of this, just as I was kind of digging through, a lot of just, hey, we're gonna we're gonna move a guy across the face of the center right before the snap. I mean, how much of this pre-snap stuff here impacts at the last minute? I mean, you see the center pointing at Parsons there, right? Really, this is pretty easy, Phil. This this is easy. As soon as 11's off the ball, we count him as a down. So it's really you're telling the right guard either you're sliding to the left with me if he's over here, or you're man up with him if he comes on the right. Like and then the running back has 55 easy. if he comes. Right? The running back has anyone yeah. else. Anyone it's else. And so, like Jeremiah said, it's easy because he comes up to center. He'll say, hey, four down, four down. And he'll just – he'll either tap his head and point to 11, which tells us we have him, we're solid to him. The only problem becomes, like Jeremiah said, is when he's walking around, you're trying to think of what is he doing? Why is he doing this? Is he going to pick the tackle? Is he going to pick the center? Is he going to pick the guard? And that's why he, he's trying to get you to freak out a little bit. And all of a sudden, he lines up across from you, and you're going to fly out of your stance, be out of control, and he's just going to get the sack. But that guard did a great job of setting and not oversetting. It was almost kind of like he was like – I'm going to take one kick and see where this takes me. And it ended up really well for him. That's the one thing. If you're playing guard, like, you know that, like, I'm big, I'm strong. Like, let him run through my chest, right? Like, he's yeah. big and strong, too, but I'd invite the bull rush because I can sit on that more than trying to be like, hey, I'm going to try and make you pick an edge, right? That's where he can use his athleticism versus he is 245, and he's a powerful dude. But if you're 310 and you can engulf him, you're going to win that battle just by leverage. Right. Let's actually stick with the Cowboys. I have a couple more Cowboys Lions ones here for you guys because this is a fun little chess match between uh, a good Lions team and a Cowboys <clears throat> defense that's kind of sneaky. So I'll just run this play real quick. You'll see a nice little quarterback hit there. Mm. 
on this one for Micah Parsons. Jared Goff hangs in there. I think they just completed that pass. So again, he's now he's lining up off the, Over uh, the, the left, left tackle. Side. Yep. Question: Why is the left tackle in a three point? And everyone else is in a two point. Jeremiah, please explain to me. <laughs> He, uh, he missed the memo that that's number 11. <laughs> Did he think it was first down? <laughs> he missed. Hey, what are you guys doing? I yelled, hey, tight ends attached. We got to be a three-point. He looks over and his guard's in a two-point, and he knows that the problems have already started. Hank Fraley, shame on you for letting your left tackle be a three-point <laughs> and a third down against Micah Parsons. I mean, so, like, so why? Like, what, why does this happen? What are the reasons why a, a left tackle would be doing this right now? Forgets the down, like what? Trying to fool, like maybe trying to, like, hey, Michael, this is a run, but then but his it, guard it, doesn't, it doesn't work if your guard's standing straight you up. You have a six down. foot eight guard standing over yeah, here. It's for like, God's the sake. real yeah. answer is because he's an idiot. That's why. Yeah. It's third down. I never put my hand down on third down. I didn't care if it was power. I got to sell that I need these guys upfield, right? Like you never want, and that's one of the things that sometimes guys try to get a little too sneaky and you're like, dude, what do you, what do you, cause that, that didn't look good. He also tried to jump him here to be fair. You know, he tried to, he tried to jump set here, which is where you try and stalemate him right on the ball. Your hands have to be phenomenal. If you're going to jump set a guy and Decker has played a lot of football. So he's trying to switch it up, right? That's another thing you do to these guys. These edge rushers don't let them get a beat on how you're setting. But the problem is he immediately gets head up with him, right? Yeah. If you go back to the start as a, as a pause, as if you let him take his first kick, right to right? contact, take go his right first to contact, kick, right to contact, and pause it there, Mackey. So one right. bang, right there, there. He's stripe to stripe with him, right? You're now telling him he has a two way go. You're not convincing him to go to one side or the other, right? Right. So you want to stay inside out. As soon as he goes inside out, he doesn't get his hands inside. You see Parsons' hands are inside, so now he has control of the chest, right? And if you jump set a guy, you're leaving yourself susceptible to games, right? They kind of fall into this te here. You know, they kind of just fall into it, but that's just really hard because your guard and them are on second levels. Yeah. No, I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I love the idea of jumping him, right? Like, that's one thing that Jeremiah said that's in our toolbox that we have to continuously keep changing up our sets. So, because if they do eventually get a beat on you, they can figure out when you're going to throw your hands. And that becomes the biggest problem because then they just start, it becomes a hand fight and you don't want that. So, you have to do things like this, like jump him. I love the thought of it, but like Jeremiah said, when you go stripe to stripe, they see way more inside like free access than you think. And so they're like, hey, I'll just go in here. And your whole thought process is I'm going to jump him and he's going to go outside. So the minute he goes in, you're like, "Where's? why is he doing this? And you just end up being behind the block. Is this a, is this a planned twist by the Cowboys defensive line? Or is this improvisation by Micah Parsons? Okay, I'm, the play has taken me to the inside and yeah. – I'm going to I'm going to go across to another gap here. This is improv. That's, also yeah. it's game plan knowing that Jared Goff's not a mobile quarterback. I was just going to say that. If you know is, that they if, can do if that. If you're playing Lamar Jackson or you're playing Patrick Mahomes or Josh Allen, you cannot do this. Correct. You have to keep outside contained. But when you're playing more of a pocket quarterback that stands in there and you're not really threatened by his legs, that's when the edge rushers have more freelance to mm -hmm. kind of do this type of stuff and whatever they want. So against and, the Ravens, this winds up being a 15-yard right. run exactly. flushed out to the left, 50, right? 50-yard run. Yeah. And that was the, that was always the fun. And people always ask me, is it harder to block for a pocket passer or someone that's going to run? It really is the pocket passer because they know. The defense will go, hey, we'll give them a first down once a game. We don't really care. But at the same time, we'll take all this chaos up front because we're going to get five, six sacks out of it. Or the minute this guy sees – pressure in his face he's going to get a deer in the headlights whereas when it was with cap it was completely different it was hey the minute he felt pressure he's gone don't worry he's going to get away from it he'll take care of it and it was like it's almost kind of fun and you know that they have to stay extremely lane dependent like they're never going to rush out of this b gap so you're almost trying to overset them to be like dude i dare you i dare you to go inside cap's gonna run he's just gonna take off he's just gonna go and they would get so pissed <laughs> All right, let's do another here. This is Cowboys Lions again here. We'll go full screen for you guys. We'll run the play. And uh, again, I think this is another one where the Lions did a good job containing. And this is Micah right here off of the uh, left edge if you are the stance, offensive. So that's a plus. Hey, we're learning. Again, five, again, five zero look here, right? Five down linemen. They're going to try and man everyone up. I know you just got that. I know you two, just got three, that. Four, five. This is actually a good That's job. That's a good job right there. Right, Decker. Good job. Right? This is a good job. We talk about it just like on the last one. He stays square. He doesn't turn like we saw Lael Collins do right away. 
right? He sets at least two square. So he gets to two, wait till you get to contact. So you can fast forward, fast forward. One, two, settles, right? He settles and then throws his hands, right? He still nose to nose, but he's not quite as overset as the last one. And then he catches him here. And if you hit him with his hands, see how Micah Parsons' feet stop? Like mm -hmm. they don't continue moving forward. That's what you're supposed to do with your hands. Any young old lineman watching, any professional lineman that's listening to this, your hands aren't meant to stop the rush. They're meant to stop his feet, right? Because right. if you can stop his feet, then you can recover. If he gets through here and you don't hit him with your hands and Decker throws his hands here, if he's throwing him outside, if he doesn't hit him with his hands to slow him down, this mm -hmm. is a carbon copy of what we watched against Blake Brandell. He's going to get that left hand. He's going to pull the left tackle's shoulder through, and he's going to pull himself through. But he's able to get hands on him, stop his feet right there, and now he has to convert to a bull rush, which is what every D lineman will do when you stop their feet. And Decker and does a great job. Close, wait, wait, look at that. Go back, go back. No, 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 go back. Right? Decker does a great job of sitting – all right, play, play. Once he makes contact, they go inside, and you can see – Taylor starts to kind of wrench down with his elbows, and that's when he locks it in. And that's exactly how you're going to defeat a guy like this. You're going to stop his feet with a quick jolt, and then you got to reclasp him in right there. Yep. You see, mm. that's you where, go, he, that's where he wins the rep. Go back a half a step here, Mackey. You see Micah Parsons' left arm out. His left arm's not in the rush, right? So that means he has inside control. The left tackle has inside control of his chest, which there means he has no power to fight through that, right? You right. want to get extension on them, and Boone's right. You anchor yourself down, you engage your back, your core, all of that, core. and then you just sit down on him. It's kind of amazing, though, because as as textbook, it seems like this is pretty close to considering who you're going one on one, -on -one against. This if you're a perfect. tackle, like this is a pretty pretty good job here, right? It's and perfect. look how far he still like he still gets. Nah, I'm not giving that to you, Mackie. That's a win. Okay, that's, that's a, a win, win all the way, dude. Are you if serious? Not, I'm not even if close. He's not touching your quarterback. That's a not even. Close you're good. Rush. That's a Dude, non. You, you, that's a you non can't expect. Rush. He just makes yeah. it so hard, though. Is is my point? Like it's. Nah, just... I think this rep is a lot easier than you think. This is more okay. just understanding who you are, right? I'm gonna set off the ball. I'm gonna get to my spot. I'm gonna throw my hands, and then I'm gonna have a plan. And that's what he does. It's a great rep. So you know you have that much space to work with, and so it's less about yeah. And Goff and Goff can on, make the adjustment. Goff will up. move as long as you're not stepping on his toes. It's a win. <laughs> and Goff will move. He'll move out of your way. He knows. Hey, this dude's manned up out here by himself. Yeah. All uh, right. You mentioned some Rams. Uh, I don't know if one of these clips is what you were talking about. Let's go to let's go to a, a Rams Cowboys battle here, including Micah Parsons. So we'll run this. Go full screen for you guys. Let's do it. I'm sick of squinting. Okay. I'm getting old. All right. Here we go. Where is he at? Where he's on the top he right. There he is. Okay, so he's look. They're gonna chip him. Oh. Uh, this, this is, is more Demarcus Lawrence, but this is again we talked about it before I even brought the tape up. When you have two dominant players over here, and then you have Anthony Barr over there to the left, like you know you're going to entice the the line to slide left, and then as soon as they see empty protection here, they know that they can just do whatever they want. This right guard, go this back. Right, this right guard gets one. This right guard one he's on. Go back, go back, oh my god! He didn't even. Play. He, he forgets that it's a Sunday in the National Football League in this one. Dude, you have the two premier pass rushers what? from that team on oh, your no. side, and you're the guard, and you slide through him. I don't even know. Go to the next clip. I'm not even watching this. I can't watch this. <laughs> Seriously. No. If no. his check cleared that week, somebody <laughs> needs a refund badly. This is also – this is the Micah Parsons effect where they are so worried about 11 – that you know it's like we got like we said the guard you got to get there you got to help him you got to go and then all of a sudden it's like oh wait i forgot about the guy that was in front of me right? so they're, they're so, so center so center is sliding to center his left ids 42 is the point right it's empty go protection right got so it. you see they motion him out so he's empty protection you're going to bring it to the one linebacker in the box there'd be no reason for them to slide right here no. because you want to protect yourself with no back in the backfield and protection so you identify the linebacker in the box, you're sliding left, and then these two guys on the right have to just take care of these two guys, and the right guard missed the memo. Oof. There's a lot of this, though. The, this is one of the biggest narratives right now in the NFL is two pass rushers to a side, and it, because it forces the guard to become a tackle. It's something that's very hard for these guys because it causes them to cause a lot of depth. They have to move their hands quicker. A lot of twists are involved. It's a lot of thinking. At the same time, Jeremiah, you know me better than anyone. I never would have overset somebody like that and been like, I had no idea I was blocking that guy. Yeah, what do you mean we slid left? <laughs> We're L, going to Lawrence. L. 
Poor. <laughs> And you wonder, and you wonder, you know, Matthew Stafford just w- came into the season with like back problems and an arm or something. And the right. poor guy, the Rams had a ton of injuries and, 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 and Andrew Whitworth retired. Like they had a lot of stuff going well, on that's, there. That's the classic. You come onto the sideline and the coach goes, hey, idiot, do I need to paint one shoe red, one shoe yellow? So you understand yeah. your rights and lefts. <laughs> so bad. Uh, so this is not, this is interesting here. Right? So notice where Micah Parsons is straight up over the center on this play. Mm. And notice that nobody else is around him. Create space. Ooh, I bet we create space. That this Wide is. Wide 80. No, they're sliding on to him, aren't they? Oh, help. He got oh the throw God. off. All right, so this is, go back real quick, because I, I want to talk about this. This is a little X's and O's. Go back real fast, Mac. Mac a back. Hold on. Go ahead, hit, hit play, play, play it through, play it through. Stop, go back. Why are they not going left? It's empty, pro- it's empty protection. They're sliding to the right. But there's nobody over there. It there's one guy over there. They only run out of there because the back motions out to the left. So go back into the top. So again, we're going to X's and O's time here. Empty protection. We always want to slide away from the passing strength. Always. Right, We want to slide away in order to protect our quarterback on his weak side. So initially, you look over here, there's two receivers to the right, and there's three guys to protect them. Right, There's three mm-hmm. guys over there. Corner, guy over number two. And so you're thinking, okay, over here I have two guys and also three. Right, There's three guys pressed over here, but if there's three for three on the left side and the safety standing in the middle of the field, we're going to slide to our right to protect our quarterback's blind side. So if they do send pressure to the strength, he can get, beat it with the ball with a hot route. Right, But what happens with the motion when you send it over here, they bump all the way over there, and now there's only two. There's only one guy to cover that guy over there. Now all your, all your dangers to the left, but they just don't get the play call changed here beforehand. Uh, that's bad ball. That's bad. Ball. It's 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 bad ball because number one, you put the number one pass rusher on your center, and he's going straight back by himself, and you're basically telling the guards, "Listen, we'll hold presence for you." Like even here, twenty eight is not a threat to me. I'd be like, "Dude, I'm going left so fast to help you. I'm going to be there." Now, yeah, it puts a lot of pressure on your right tackle, but remember, those big boys get paid a ton of money too, so I'm not so worried about it, dude. You got cursed 15, 10 yards off the feet. I mean, he's there to save a, save a life, but that, that play could have been a lot better. It had yeah. they gone with – we would have called it a Lou. Yeah, a Lou. Four, four Three guys down. The, four guys sliding to the left here, protect it, right tackle, earn your money. No, that's And we used to do this all the time, and it was a lot because we wanted to sit, protect the center. You don't want your best pass rusher against the guy who, number one, has to snap the ball. And number two, you don't want him getting frazzled at all. But this is another thing. If, that, if they don't have that left tack, right guard involved – this is what Parsons does. He creates – you can't pass off a game when you have a crease like this between the center and the guard, right? Uh, so he threatens him with speed. He pumps him left, goes back inside right, you know, and then boom, right there, that little hesitation. Now, if they actually if – if 77 was eaten up here, this is 54 up the gut because Parsons does a great job of not getting passed off. Hmm. Amazing. So we've now seen – I think we've seen Parsons in four different places in like the yeah. seven clips that we've looked at so far. And we still they haven't just, even seen him drop yet. Like, full-on play Mike Linebacker and drop, which is insane yeah. to me that they and do that. And there's a bunch of them. I, I yeah, love there's, that. I there's love a bunch that they do that. That would mess with me as a player. I'd be like, why is he off the ball? Why is he dropping? I love this formation. I love everything about the Rams. They just – look how much they spread you out. I mean, they're making this camera angle look tough at times. They you have said the, every, Ram, the Rams offense is spreading you out here. Look at this. I right. mean, you have three receivers up top. You got two down here. You got one mm-hmm. all the way down here to the sideline. This is how the you Cowboys make defense. The Cowboys defensive line is also in an interesting and, – and you'll see it even more when we go to the – And we can talk the, about that, but this is kind of like, like you just said – the defense has their scheme. They're going to spread your offensive line out. And a bigger picture is the offense is going to spread you out because they're going to force you to show them if they're coming or not because they know that when they're this spread out, you can't really fake anything. Mm-hmm. If you're up tight or you're up close, you're probably coming because you if you're dropping, you've got a lot of distance to cover. So this is how the offense comes at you. Now this is how the defense comes at you. They so basically this, is, this is interesting. I mean, everyone's, everyone's basically wider than the, than the tackle's helmets yeah. on the defensive line. This is what Alex was just talking about. It makes your tackle. It makes your guards have to play tackle. It's hard right? they, for them. They have to set just like a tackle would, and that's tough for them when they're not used to it. You know, bigger bodies. They don't like space, and so now they're getting two or three kicks. Now this left guard does a phenomenal job of using his hands 
right? If you go back, like the best way to stop a game is you punch the penetrator, right? 92 left guard. So no, no, one shoe red, yeah. one shoe yellow, Mackey. Jesus, um, Mackey. Sorry, sorry. So sorry. left guard 73 here, right? He sets, and you can see it. No, you can just run it from there. Yeah. He sets, you know, 92 and 54, we're trying to run a game. You know, he does a really nice job. He flattened the penetrator, 92, bang, punches him with his hands right there, delivers him to the tackle, tackle set square, and you can collect the guy coming back underneath. Wow. That's, no, a, that's a textbook job. job. That's a really nice yeah, job is. by them. Go back real quick. Look, at, Check out the right side. We're sliding to the right, obviously, here. I mean, we don't even know who the two guys to the right on our screen are. But we know those two guys, and that's why we're sliding that way. But this is where we talked about. Go back. Remember the play where the Vikings, where we were talking about how do you hold space? This right guard does a good job of holding space for the centers that he can get on to Marcus Lawrence while still keeping his eyes to the right. Watch, he's holding space. Now, see right away his eyes turn to the right. I'm here. I'm present for you, so I'm going to take the first jab. You stay on mm. him, and then I got to get out there. Now, what he doesn't do is go back a little bit. He's got to get out there and hit Micah. If you have an opportunity like this, you start to see him come in, you got to drop a shoulder right now and let him know that this is not – a lane that you can come to today. If you come in here, I'm going to be dropping shoulders on you. I'm going to be throwing you out of the club because it's <laughs> a quicker way to the quarterback. So you want him thinking, I need to rush outside today. That's seriously how you start to punish people is the minute you get the tackle to put his hands on him, you got to go out there and lay the boomstick. Yeah, you can see Havasin setting him to the outside because he knows he's, he has help, right? He's inviting him on the inside move because he knows his guard's supposed to be there. Right, so that's why you see the overset a little bit. But again, this is a good this is a good pickup. This is mm -hmm. a good pickup. Matt can deliver the ball first down. Cooper Cup. Boom. I love it, and and just like like you kind of said too, you're playing, you're out there for three hours, and if you can just get a couple, two, three more shoulder dings in there, make a guy feel it, make it make it more physical. Right, I would think there's some yeah. value in that. Absolutely. Set a little Slows set a little tone. Right. So I got one more here for you guys. And it, it's just more of a question of, okay, watch what they're doing pre-snap here with Micah Parsons. They're moving him around, and um, does this does this cause chaos here? Well, first as of much all, your, as safety, I, your safety is down. So right here, what's see that? going on? So got again, he, here's Micah. Here's <laughs> Micah Parsons right here. You got him standing right in front of the safety. I'd be like, what's he doing? Again, this is one where we're, we're going to five down it. Right, even if he's yep. off the ball, we're going to five down it. And oh, no. Oh, no. Guard. <laughs> <laughs> I just told you everyone should be looking at it. What are you doing? Now, he gets nice the pass job. off. This is a nice job by the running back. But you, this is this is the mismatch of mismatches, right? Here's so right now. They're they're just calling 11 a, a linebacker here. They're like, hey, we're just going to go a sword on the right side. Left side, you're you're done. You're, you're, you're man solid. on man on the left side here. Solid, right? But when he moves the snap of the ball like this, you got to switch the slide. Like, but that, they do yes. a great job because the Rams are at home, but have to go on silent count because you know they're the Rams and everyone wants to go to L.A. You know this shouldn't be a problem on the on the your home home turf. You should no. be able to get a call out right here, be like, hey, no L L L L, and get over there because I mean Henderson gets a nice job, but he kind of trips over his own feet. But this is this is exactly what they want to do by creating a mismatch of not allowing eleven to get blocked by an O line. Where is that call? The, okay, I want to no, know no. how close to the ball there, no, snap no, no, no. is is the call. I'm going to answer that because there wouldn't really wouldn't be need to be a call. That right guard, the minute he goes in there, since I'm solid on him, I'm instantly throwing up my left arm and pushing the center to the left, saying go go go. And he should see it too. But remember, he's just snapped the ball. He put his head down for a second, so he's a little chaotic right there. See how he's pushing him? The center right now needs to go left. Why? Because our declaration went to the left, so we have to go to the left. And this is one of the things where you going in pre-game, you would tell the tackles, like, listen, we might start in a Ricky, but it's going to go to a Lucky because this guy likes to move. So you need to be very cognizant of where your line is shifting. Like, we almost would tell him, don't even expect help from us because we need to follow this guy around because stuff like this will happen. Now, the center needs to get back, and 73, he tries to right there, 73 needs to get back right now as well. But like Jeremiah said, the running back does a phenomenal job of stepping up in there. And that is what they wanted to happen right there. That confusion. And now the running back's like, oh, shit. Oh, but he trips. <laughs> he trips. Yeah, even if 73 is late to this, you want to try and help save a life. Right? Like you want to, like, assume that the running back's not going to be able to get this guy one-on-one. -on -one, so you want to try and save a life. And they just are a little late to it. But you can see they're trying to get to it. It's just late. Hmm. 62 got the memo after a half second here. Yeah, but a half second. But you need to get that memo yep. faster. Right there, 
he needs to get the memo and he needs to be off. Like a go call is a very dangerous call out there because go can tell a lot of people to go somewhere and you're kind of, and you're trusting a lot of people. You know what I'm saying? Like you, you hear a random go call and it's always weird how you always know the go call is meant for you. Like you're like, go, go, go. And you're just gone. Like you just trust so many people. And then a lot of times I would come back and people were like, Hey, I think that was the wrong guy. <laughs> no, I knew I shouldn't have trusted you. You're tight end. So, so moving, moving Micah Parsons at the last minute across the face of the center, it just, even if it causes a half second of chaos or pause or yeah. one guy, the left guard doesn't get the memo or something. And in a good job by the Rams, Micah Parsons tripped a little bit here, but I think the running back Listen, saves the day. If you're watching the Cowboys this year and you've listened to this podcast, watch how they scheme him when he's off the ball to try and get him on a running back. That's the number one thing. Whenever he's off the ball, the whole idea is going to be how can we get him matched on the running back, not on an O-lineman. So that's when he's moving and doing all that chaos stuff from off the ball. Their whole goal is like, okay, mismatch. So just as you watch it this year, just keep an eye out for that because that'll be – it's just something that – that's one thing Alex and I look for all the time is how is the defense coordinator trying to create the mismatches for the defense and the offense. Love it. Great stuff. So there it is. That's how you That's how you attempt to deal with one of the most ferocious defensive players in the NFL from an offensive line perspective. Uh, communicate, pray a little bit maybe, and uh, cross your fingers that he trips once in a while. Most importantly, quarterbacks get rid of the freaking ball. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Throw it! Justin Smith needs to laugh about that. Throw it! That's Alex, Jeremiah, I'm Phil, and this is the O-Line Committee. Click subscribe and the like button to spread the word about this offensive line lifestyle podcast.